You're listening to Secrets of a Bridal Seamstress podcast. I'm your host, Nadine Bozeman. In this podcast, I'm sharing business systems and strategies specifically tailored to the bridal sewing industry so you can build your own modern and profitable bridal alterations business. Join me as I also get to chat with fellow seamstresses and share their personal success stories. I'm so glad you're here and that we can grow together in this unique trade. Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of Secrets of a Bridal Seamstress. Today, I'm so excited to dive in to the topic of social media. Now, before you get sweaty and before you feel like, I don't even want to listen to this, I don't even want to think about Instagrams, I already feel guilty enough as it is because I'm not posting, I'm not doing all the things, don't worry, this episode is created to put you at ease to assure you that you are not alone in your Instagram angst. And I know like we're in the middle of busy season and the last thing you want to think about is like posting on Instagram. So do not worry. This is not a guilt trip. This content comes from a recent challenge that we had within our SBS membership, like early spring. We had our Instagram challenge, our Instagram bingo challenge. And it wasn't so much about like what to post or how often to post, but it was really about thinking of what our mindset is when we're about to hop on the app and what our big picture goals should be. So we want to keep it big and vague and easy. And that's, I just wanted to share some key takeaways with you. Just a heads up, we're going to be doing this again in the fall because spring was kind of a hard time to put all this into practice. So some of our members, like that was a really busy time for them. And so the thought of like implementing something new, you know, it was exciting, but they didn't really get to finish it because of the time of the year. And I get it. So that was kind of like our beta phase. We're going to do this again in the fall, compare results, but mostly it was to just take a step back and look at the big picture and just give yourself some grace of how you're using the app and the results that you're getting and all the things. So my goal with this episode is to just encourage you, you're doing great with whatever you're doing already. And I want to give you some helpful tips of how to just make better use of your time and protect your heart and your mind when you're hopping on Instagram and maybe give you some like really vague and widely interpreted tips for how to use (laughs) the the app. Okay. Isn't that fun? Doesn't that sound promising? Okay. If you are on my email list, you've already heard about this first takeaway that I'm going to share. So I've been sending a six figure Friday tip of the week to my email list this year. And it's been really fun. I've been just sending little snippets of entrepreneurship to my email list. So it's like each week you just get a little golden nugget about like business mindset or, you know, money saving tips or social media stuff or whatever. So it's just something different each week, but just to give you a little boost before the weekend. So if you want to get on that list, you can head to the show notes and sign up and then you'll get the next six figure Friday tip of the week. So this first one was already sent to my email list this past Friday, but it is a big one. And I feel like this, this first takeaway will just kind of like feed into everything else we talk about today. And that is when you open up Instagram, are you opening it as a creator or as a consumer? Okay. This is, this is huge because you have, you're kind of taking a little second to think, why am I actually, what am I doing when I'm opening up my app? So if you are a consumer, you're hopping on there to scroll. You're going to check out some stories. You're going to see what other people are doing. You don't really have a purpose of your own, but you just want to see what others are doing. And chances are, you're not going to feel great about yourself because they're doing so much and you're doing nothing. You're just scrolling. And you're wasting your time and you're already tired. You've had a long day of fittings. You're at the grocery store in line. You just want to get home. So you hop on the app and then you see all these other people doing really cool things, probably making way more money than you. And you feel sad. Okay. So I'm just kidding. That was a really exaggerated experience, but maybe you do experience that. I don't know. And, but the point is when you open up an app to consume the entertainment factor, you don't really have a plan and you're consuming. That is the point, right? The opposite of that is to be a creator. And when you open the app, you have a purpose. So you have something specific that you want to share with your audience, whether that's your future clients or your local small business friends. You want to share something about your business. You want to share something about a recent experience with a client. Maybe you want to share something relevant on your stories for your audience and you have a purpose. Maybe you want to connect with some other local businesses. So you're going to shoot a few DMs or you're going to intentionally comment on some posts. And that is your intention as a creator. And then you're going to close the app. So the difference between the two experiences is number one, as a consumer, you don't have a purpose and you kind of close the app feeling like you wasted some time and 
you may feel a little like weird about yourself or you might have that angst or that competition or the feeling of like, I'm not doing enough. And that is so common. So if you feel that way, whether it was as drastic as I explained, or if it's just like a little snippet of that feeling, you're not alone and you don't have to have that feeling. Okay. If you open up the app as a creator, you have a purpose, you did the job, you went on there to do what you intended to do, then you can close the app, turn off your notifications and just kind of be done with it. Okay. So I started thinking this way a couple of years ago because I realized just what social media was doing to my heart and doing to my mind, you know, like the Bible actually talks about like protecting your eye gate. And so I remember hearing that when I was younger and I think about that so much on social media apps, like there it's a, an eye gate, like a gate into our, a gateway to our minds and our hearts through what we're looking at. And sometimes we don't think about that because like everybody uses social media and it's so normal now to see what other people are doing and how cool their lives are. And it's very normal to compare yourself in a really kind of invasive way. <laughs> that wasn't the case like 10 years ago. So once I realized like, okay, this is probably like doing a doozy on my mental health and my well-being, I had to take a step back and think of like, how am I actually using the app? And am I doing this right? Like, am I, am I making a good use of my time? Am I being a good steward of like what I have? Right. So that little mindset change has really helped me. Now, sometimes you do want to consume stuff and I get it. So I want to encourage you to be honest with yourself and set up a separate account that is not your business account. So when you do log in, you know that you're consuming for entertainment and you're not giving yourself the excuse of like, oh, I'm working. Okay. So I have a non-business account, Nadine Bose. When I log into that, I can look at all the chicken memes. I can look up recipes. I'm following, you know, my like book bloggers or reading influencers and, you know, funny stuff, whatever. And I know, okay, I'm checked out. Like I'm on the couch. I'm tired. I just want to scroll and I want to see what my friends are doing. My real, like my local friends, right? People that I actually see in real life. <laughs> I know what their lives are really like. So it doesn't cause any weirdness. I look through that. It's fun. And then like I close the app and okay, I, I wasn't working then. I was just entertaining myself, right? So I encouraged our SPS members to create a personal account if they didn't already have one so that if they did want to just scroll and snoop or whatever you do on social media, you can do it without the guise of telling yourself that like, oh, I'm doing this for work, right? And you can still follow other seamstresses, other sewing, you know, influencers or whatever. Like you can still do that from your personal page, but then at least you're telling yourself when I log in, I'm scrolling as a consumer, as opposed to when you log into your business account, you're logging in as a creator. So when I log into Sweet, what is it? Sweet Francis we go, what's the name of my business? And then Secrets of Bridal Seamstress, like I'm logging in with a mission. Okay. So I have something to post. I want to check in on certain businesses. I'm going to leave a few comments. I'm going to send a few DMs and then I'm going to be done. You know what I don't do too? This is kind of a huge one. I don't scroll through stories. Blech. Okay. So this was a part of like, yeah, a couple of years ago, I was like, this is so time consuming because they just roll one into the next, the next. And you don't realize how many you've actually gone through. Again, that goes back to like your eye gate, right? Like how much you're letting into your mind, like scrolling and like just letting it go from one to the next to the next. And I feel like stories, they can be so fun because you can really see like, oh, cool. Like they garden too, or, oh, that's so fun. Like that's what their little like date night looks like. Or or I also love seeing what the inside of people's houses look like. Yeah, we'll we'll get more into that later. But I love when I get to take a peek into somebody's house. Like if I go for a walk at dusk, I was just talking about this with a couple girlfriends. Like dusk is the best time to walk because people have the lights on in the house and they don't realize that you can see in because it's not dark enough yet, but you can totally see like how they decorate, how clean their house is, like where they put the furniture, all the things before they think to close the blinds or the drapes. So there's a little voyeurism tip for you. Dusk is the time to go for a walk if you're into that. Anyway, so stories, I can also see into people's houses on stories. So that's really fun, right? Why did I get on that rabbit trail? Oh gosh. Oh, so it's just so easy to go like from one story to the next to the next. And then I had to realize, okay, this is taking up so much of my time. So now I only like look at stories of our members because I want to see what they're up to. Not in a creepy way, but you know, like I'm part of their life. I want to know what their wins are, what they're going through, whatever. I want to see their dresses that they're sharing, you know? I'll, if I haven't heard from people in a while or like I just have friends that I haven't connected with, I'll pop in their stories and react to stories and just 
be part of it. And that's it. I don't let it kind of roll from one to the next to the next because that was just such a time consumer for me. So sometimes I do that in my personal account, but I don't do it in my business accounts anymore. And that's been like a big game changer for me. So you think to yourself, are you a creator or are you a consumer? And is this for business or is this for entertainment? And really be honest about this with yourself because it can still be business related, but entertaining. So you can still be like looking at other seamstresses or like looking at sewing accounts, but it's entertainment. You don't have a purpose in your business for being on the app. You're just like, ah, okay, well, I'm getting gas. So I might as well open this while I'm filling the tank or whatever, you know, like have a purpose. And I think that's really going to help you before you even open up the thing. Are you a creator or a consumer? Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the actual content. And again, I want to keep this really vague. Okay. Don't think about like specific rules, but like very general guidelines. Okay. So when you're thinking about your feed and that is for those of you who are like, I don't use Instagram very much. It's when you open it up and you see like the nine squares. So it's called the nine grid. So at any point in time, it's like the nine squares that just show up on your Instagram. Is it too personal or is it too sterile? And there is kind of a fine balance between the two. And I don't want you to go crazy about like overthinking it and having this perfectly curated, curated like every third post is this and da, 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 da. Like, no, but what I do want you to just generally take a peek at is is what you're posting, is it too personal? Like, are you posting photos of your pets and your family reunions? And I don't know, like something that you made for dinner that has literally nothing to do with your business? Or is it the opposite and it's too sterile? Like every single post is like beautifully curated on Canva and only has your brand colors. And it's only a perfect headshot which I do love a good headshot, don't get me wrong. I am all about branding photos, I love that. But there's also a little bit of play involved with the professional style posting, right? So let's first talk a little bit about like too personal. So I feel like when you go on a business Instagram that is a representation of somebody's business, that's exactly what it should be. Because business owners should also have, like I just talked about, personal Instagrams and that's when you post your family reunions and your recipes and like your hand injury or whatever and your pets and all that stuff like that is what that Instagram is appropriate for if your brand if your business name like what potential clients are looking up on Instagram to find you and then they find your business and they're like what is this like literally what do they do you know you want it to be a representation of your business so I would include your brand colors I would have a consistent theme when it comes to your tone of voice. Like you want to have a consistent tone because you want to be trustworthy. So it's like, have the same message, be the same person. Whenever you show up, everybody likes bright pictures. Like literally there's no way to like negate that. Everybody is drawn to a well lit photo. If you don't have good lighting, get a ring light. They're literally 20 bucks on Amazon. You can set up a ring light in your studio. So that means every picture that you take of your sewing machine, of the dresses that you're working on, all of a sudden it has great lighting and it instantly makes your photos look more professional. It's amazing. I have a ring light literally like right here, like on the other side of my camera, of my laptop. So it was 20 bucks. Maybe it was 22 on Amazon. Okay. So well-lit photos, include your brand colors, include like, I would include pictures of you because I know that we have feelings about this. Like I don't want my face on Instagram, but our clients feel more inclined to trust us when they see us. So you can have somebody take some nice pictures of you. They're called branding photos. You can hire a professional photographer or you can get your niece to come in with her iPhone and take some pictures of you with a, in a well-lit space or go outside and just have some photos of a you or you holding like a needle and thread or something, you know, that has to do with sewing. <laughs> So that you can include some photos of yourself on your Instagram feed. But most importantly, just keep it nice and clean and professional, right? Because that's going to help your clients trust you when they see a nice, clean feed. Here's a really great idea. If you're like, I don't know what you're talking about. I have no idea what that means to have a clean feed or what, what the heck are branding colors. I would go to an Instagram business page that you already like. Like, who do you like to look at? Who, when you open up Instagram as a consumer... Uh -huh. wink wink who do you like to check out and why is that why are you drawn to that and what are they doing go ahead and emulate that like 
is it because of their consistency? Is it because of the pretty pictures? Is it because of their their education or whatever? It's totally acceptable to find somebody that you're like, I really like what they're doing and then just do it with your own brand. There's literally no shame in that. You don't need to reinvent the wheel, okay? So for Sweet Francis Sewing Co., speaking of sterile, I feel like that I'm trying to like get out of the sterile. I'll, I'll come back to that. Circle back. Let me move to sterile and then I'll come back to Sweet Francis. So the opposite of being too personal is being too sterile. So sometimes we see feeds that have all of these beautifully curated posts in only brand colors. And a lot of them are created like on Canva. Like you see a lot of the graphics, you know, and for some reason I see this a lot with like realtors or like financial advisors or bookkeepers, the, the local people that I follow. I see this a lot on their Instagram feeds. It's like all really pretty graphics. And I'm like, I just want to see a picture. Like I'm on Instagram, like show me a photo of you or so show me a picture of you in your office or, or show me a picture of a house. I don't know. You know what I mean? So the opposite of being too personal is just to be too sterile and everything is so like carefully curated. You know what I'm saying? So I, I will admit, I feel like that's kind of how Sweet Francis was for a while. So back in the day, I had an Instagram that was for the podcast for Sweet Francis Sewing Co. It was all combined and it was really weird because I really didn't want my brides necessarily following Secrets of Bridal Seamstress because that content wouldn't really be for them. I wanted them to follow Sweet Francis Sewing Co. I think this was like three years ago that I finally split it too. I don't know. That's besides the point. So at first, Sweet Francis Sewing Co. was just very like, okay, here's a picture of a bride. Here's an example of my work. Da, 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 like really tidy and pretty. And I'm trying to go outside the box and just be a little bit more me behind the business in a professional way. So I'm, I'm not going so far as to post the pictures of what I'm making for dinner on my main feed, but I'm just trying to show my face more and be a little bit more like approachable because I realize I've definitely neglected that part of my business for a long time. So see, doesn't that make you feel better? You're not the only one. We all do it. I don't have time for that. I'm already booked. So I'm like, I, I don't want to be on Instagram. So anyway, that's that's besides the point. So there is a balance between like being too personal and too sterile. And probably the best way to solve that is to find some business Instagrams, find some seamstresses that you respect and you want a similar business model to them and check out what they're doing and do the same thing, right? The most important thing is to think of like who you're posting for. So we're, that's actually the final takeaway and I'm getting ahead of myself, but just Check that away for later. Okay, we'll come back to this to remember who are you posting for? And that's going to help you decide what is too sterile or what is too personal to reach your ideal audience. But one, one, one step at a time. I'm getting ahead of myself. All right. Are you organized or are you randomized? I'm, I initially wanted each of these takeaways to rhyme and they don't already. So I some of them rhyme, some of them don't. And it's already, it's already bothering me. But organized or randomized? So sometimes... You may have heard like people talk about posting on social media and you need to post your pillars and you need to, every third post needs to, you know, include this type of information da, 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 and it can just get really minute and like it can be paralyzing because you're like, I don't know where to start. And like, Duh! like once you get a cute picture of a bride, you want to post it, but then you're like, well, what, what category does this fit under? What pillar? And the people just don't post. And I hear that all the time, that there's this, like, there's this paralyzation that happens, you know, and because you want to make sure that you're doing the right thing and like posting the right subject and it gets to be too organized in your mind where you literally do nothing. Okay. Then there's the opposite where you'll post like every two months and it's really random. And the message is random. Like these are bust cups that I like to use. Okay. And then two months later, you'll be like, bring shoes to your appointment. And then two months later, you're like, bring your, don't bring too many guests with you. Or, you know, things that just like really have like, what, like what? And they're so like far spread out and there's not, there's no plan. It's like super randomized, random. And I get that. We've all been there. You That may just be your survival mode <laughs> when you're busy. <laughs> and this is a no judgment zone. So I want to give you some like really, really helpful, easy things to think about to maybe help you just feel a little more organized when you're posting. Okay. We just had our quarter two review within the membership. So we talked about some wins from April through June. And then we, we asked each other, okay, like what's your focus for quarter three? And then we made it a little more spe specific what is your focus for posting for the month of July? Okay. So just go for a month at a time and think, what am I doing in July? Okay. I'm sewing. Yeah. What do I, what message do I want to get out there now? 
The message that I'd like to get out there now is I'm already booking for spring and summer 2025 brides. I need to get that message out to my brides in July and August. So for the months of July and August, I'm really going to be kind of pushing that message of, have you booked yet? Guess what? I'm already booking for 2025. Head to the link in my bio or whatever. Comment below to get the link to book with me. Um, just reinforcing that message. And then when it comes to, honestly, I'll probably do the same thing through September. And then when it comes to October or like fall, like late September, October, November, I'm going to be talking about what you need to do to plan for your fittings because I'm thinking, okay, that's kind of the time of year people start getting engaged, like around the holidays. So I'm going to be sharing some tips of like wedding dress shopping, planning for your alterations appointments, who to bring to your appointments. Do you want a custom veil? Like thinking actually about the alterations experience because I basically I'm starting over. And then around the holidays, I'm going to be pushing dress cleaning and preservation because that I want people to get that as a Christmas gift for themselves, you know, and then we're starting at the beginning of the year where we have a lot of wedding shows and I'm going to kind of go back to booking, right? So you kind of have like two months at a time where you think it's really vague, right? For two months. Okay. Well, whatever I post, I'm going to be focusing on X, Y, Z, like a specific topic. And when you give yourself two months to post one topic, it's really easy right? It's very doable. If you're only posting once every couple of weeks or once a week, but you know, in the back of your mind, this has to be my focus, or maybe like you want to be focusing on, you know, custom items. Like you want to be selling your veils or your garters or whatever. Like, when do you want those to sell? I'd be thinking like, Hey, the beginning of the year, the beginning of alteration season for me, I'm really going to be pushing that message of here are some like additional items that you can buy with me. Honestly, I guess that could be all year round, right? But think through, we talk about this in membership at the beginning of the year of like how to map out our financial planning. What are we going to be selling besides alterations and where throughout the year does it make sense to really push those additional items or those additional services? And that's kind of how you really vaguely build out your social media plan because for bridal seamstresses, it is different. We have the same message that we're constantly sharing with brides and it's like, how do we just put some kind of rhythm to this or how do we organize this when it feels like we're literally saying the same thing? all the time. And the way to do that is just to go in a couple month increments and think to yourself, what am I focused on now? And what do I want my potential clients to be focused on now? And go from there. It, it does not need to be super complicated. You can obviously be speaking to brides and then you can be speaking to like family members of the, the couple or like the bridal party or whatever. All of these things can be included with whatever message you want to be focusing on for the next two months. Does that make sense? Do you have questions about this? You can always DM me on Instagram. See, that would be opening the app with a purpose. You can DM me if you have questions or comments about that specific thing. But sometimes we just get in our head about it and it becomes overwhelming when you can really give yourself a very simple question. What do I want to focus on this month for posting? Or what do I want to focus on for the next two months when posting? And just go with that. Have like one phrase, pre-booking or custom veils. And just talk about that, you know? I think I mentioned this before. It may have been on here or like <clears throat> in my little email series, but it takes the average person seven times to read or hear the same fact before it sticks with them. So when you post something once, it's not going to stick in somebody's mind, right? But if they see that reminder like seven times, oh, they make veils? What? Oh, I have to get on their books now. You're kidding me. I thought I just emailed like 30 days before my wedding or whatever. So this, this information that we feel like is just on repeat in our minds, it's not on repeat in our bride's mind. So consider reusing the same content for two months and nobody's judging you. Okay. All right. This will be a quick one. Do you feel inspired or do you feel tired? See that did rhyme. So there you go. Do you feel inspired by who you're following or do you feel tired? Do you feel like, okay, I'm not doing enough or they just, they're, I don't know, they're just kind of a lot. You choose who you follow on Instagram. It's, it's a choice. And I feel like sometimes, you know, we have this really small bridal sewing community on Instagram and sometimes it can feel like an echo chamber and it's like, okay, well, we all are seeing the same thing or we're all, you know, I don't know how to explain it. It's just, it's a blessing and sometimes a curse of being in a smaller niche. But I want to give you a permission slip that if you are following somebody who does not inspire and maybe they just make you feel tired or like, 
I don't know. They make you feel some sort of way. It's okay to not follow them. Ooh. I hope that doesn't include me. Ugh, please follow me. <laughs> but, or, you know, I, I hate to, I don't really like the mute button. I just feel like, can we move past that? Like, I think we're all adults here. You don't need to mute anybody. Just scroll, either scroll by or unfollow. There's really no need to mute because I don't know. It just seems a little immature to me. But anyway, if you don't know what the mute button is, don't even worry about it. It's not worth learning about. So yeah, just think about like, what are you looking at? Is it is it fun? Is it inspiring? Does it make you want to be better? Or does it make you feel like you're less than and that you can't keep up? Or I don't know, some other sort of way. Think about how you think when you're on the app. Think about what you're thinking about, right? When you're on the app and then who is making you feel certain ways. And it doesn't need to be that way because you're choosing who you click on. So <laughs> it is a free choice, even though sometimes it doesn't feel like it is, right? Okay. And then finally, this is also a big one, but I'm going to try to keep it as short as I can. Who are you posting for? This is such a huge, when I say huge topic, it, it just can, what I mean by that is it can totally affect what you're doing on Instagram because it can feel so muddled. So are you posting for other seamstresses or are you posting for potential clients? What is the content for, right? Are you posting to reach local customers or are you posting to go viral, which would include a worldwide audience? What I would encourage you to do is, well, make money. So Will viral posts make you money? Mm, not as much as really reaching your local audience, honestly, with the business that you already have. So when you think about that, like you want to reach local potential marriers, okay? So what you post is going to be different than a sewing influencer or a bridal seamstress who's an influencer. They're not trying to just reach a local audience. They're trying to create posts that are viral. And when you think about what does it take to go viral with the post? It doesn't include just likes and comments. It includes shares. Like sharing is such a huge piece of going viral. And that's when somebody likes your reel or your photo and they share it in their DMs or they repost it to their stories or whatever. And so a lot of times if there's a cool piece of information that bridal seamstresses like, we'll share it to each other. Like, oh, this is so funny. Like, my other seamstress friends are going to get this joke or they're going to like this information, but I wouldn't share that with my potential brides. Does that make sense? So as much as I enjoy that content and it's entertaining or it's educational for me, it's not something that I would share like from the sweet Francis standpoint. Does that, or maybe I would share it from the sweet Francis standpoint, but if I were to post that from the sweet Francis standpoint, it wouldn't make sense with my goals. Is that, do you, do you get where I'm coming from here? So if you were even look at like my Sweet Francis account, I think I have like 700 followers, maybe 800, maybe somewhere in between. But I will tell you that I'm booked out for this year. I'm booked out for probably half of 2025 because my goal is not to have this huge Instagram account for Sweet Francis Sewing Co. Because I know that the people who are going to be giving me money for my work, they live locally. And so I'm really focusing on reaching them through how not only what I post, but how I interact on Instagram. Like, who am I DMing? What relationships am I building? Not just with my posts, but like with how I'm actually utilizing the app, right? How am I staying in touch with brides even after they work with me or sharing their work or, or sharing the work that I did in their dress or whatever? Like the strategy is not the same as me trying to reach like a worldwide audience. So just want to caution you, like when you're thinking of like, who are you posting for? Just, you know, bring your head up and remember that you want to, you want to find your local clients. You are a local service providing business. So it can be so fun and yes, engaging to like absorb the cool like videos that are going viral or we have like, I love following sewing influencers that are like really just fun and they, you know, they make funny reels or like they have fun projects. I'm like, oh, that's so cool. I'm going to go ahead and save this, but I'm not intending to recreate what they're doing because I know it's just not realistic for my business model, right? And that's okay. Like you do not need to be 
posting for the masses, right? I also want to encourage you that it is 100% not uncommon for potential clients to never interact with your Instagram, even though they're stalking you. So here's what I mean by that. I can't tell you how many like inquiries come from Instagram. Like, so on my inquiry form, my website, I have like a drop down menu where my clients can tell me where they found me and they'll tell me that they found me on Instagram, but they're not following me on Instagram. They have never liked a post of mine, but they got my information from Instagram, right? So, and I know from personal experience, like my personal coach that I work with, I totally scoped her out. I've been like, I kind of stalked her on Instagram. She has a podcast. I would listen to her podcast, but I wouldn't interact with her um, Instagram posts. I think I did follow her, but she has like a bazillion followers. So it's not like she'd notice me anyway, you know, but like I didn't interact with her until I booked with her and like sign the contract. Right. So don't be discouraged if you're putting stuff out there, you're not getting a ton of followers or a ton of comments or questions. Like, you know, you put, you know, a question as part of your caption and it's like crickets, but your, your audience is still listening. They're still watching, even though you're not receiving that feedback. I would say, especially like Gen Z, they're not always like commenting. You think about how TikTok works. And a lot of times TikTok, it's just either like a like or a view, like the views are kind of what counts. And so our younger brides are part of a generation that they're just looking. They don't need to commit even with a like, they're just looking. They're not even going to follow you. And that's normal. And it's not personal at all. Just keep doing what you're doing and don't let it be a numbers game because that it's, that's not what's bringing in the money at the end of the day. Okay. I hope this was encouraging to you. I hope this was helpful. And most of all, I hope that it made sense because it made sense in my head. And then sometimes when I was saying some of these things, I'm like, is this even coming across right? But I think the big picture is like the cool thing about being a bridal seamstress in 2024 is that our businesses can look so different. We can serve a different kind of client. We can really have a love for different kinds of projects. Like what I love to do, you might be bored by and what you like to do might give me nightmares. You know what I'm saying? And that's great. Like, because there are all kinds of different marriers out there who need different seamstresses and different brands to click with. So it's really a beautiful thing. And it's when we get in our heads and we look at what other people are doing and then we're like, oh my gosh, I need to be doing that too. It just starts a spiral and something that can be a really great free marketing tool for us, like Instagram, can become a burden that really is like literally too much to bear when you're in the middle of busy season. And I just want to let you know you're not alone. If you feel that way, like I am feeling nauseous when it comes to social media, like I hear that a lot. It is not just you. And there are some really simple ways to think of the big picture. I know most of our listeners don't have social media managers. That is a luxury. So when you're looking at, you know, each other's feeds, most everybody's doing it themselves. And so it's like, we're just kind of figuring out as we go along, we're not influencers and that's okay. And we're just trying to help our ideal client find us. If you want more information on like finding out who your ideal client is, I like love this topic. You can DM me. We have trainings about it in the membership. So understanding like who your ideal client is, is going to make a lot of this easier. And that's just a great first step with your biz. Okay. But that's a different topic for a different day. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you for spending some time with me. We've been having awesome guests lately on the podcast, sewing influencers, wedding pros, and some fellow seamstresses hearing from their stories. So uh, I hope you've been feeling encouraged. Let me know what you feel about this episode. And if anything resonated with you, shoot me a DM. Get on my email list if you'd like to learn more information about the Six Figure Friday Tip of the Week email that goes out each week. And I hope to see you next Tuesday. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you like what you heard, please subscribe and share this podcast with a friend. And if you're feeling really generous, leave a review. Thanks, everyone.